Hi guys, welcome to your next YouTube challenge. This week we're going to be talking about pronouns. Now I have the perfect book to share with you about this topic. It is called I and You and Don't Forget Who, What is a Pronoun? Now I know we've been talking about pronouns in class and I know you already know that a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. Like instead of saying Sally went to the store, you could say she went to the store. But this book is going to be full of a whole bunch of different types of pronouns, some types you may have not heard before. So as I'm reading, I want you to be paying attention to something uh, very closely. Yes, I want you looking at the beautiful pictures, but I also want you paying attention to any time um, you see the text. If the word is not written in black ink, then that's going to be the example of a pronoun. So I want you looking to see if there are some words that you do know, and maybe some words that are examples that surprise you. We are going to be talking about the different types of pronouns, so. So um, this is by Brian P. Cleary, and it's called I and You and Don't Forget Who. You guys ready? He is a pronoun. She is a pronoun. Even little old me is a pronoun. So is I. So is you. Whom and they, we and who. So I'm sure you see some words that you do know are pronouns that we talked about in class. Do you see any that are new? Maybe anything that's a surprise? Just like a substitute teaches your class when she's asked to fill in for your teacher, a pronoun steps in as sub for a noun, becoming the star of the feature. Pronouns can save us a boatload of words and help us avoid repetition. That's why you're going to be using pronouns, is because you, as a writer, do not want to use the same words over and over again. They stand in for Venice, Marie, or Spaghetti because that is their specific or their specified mission. Without them, we'd say. Anne's father surprised Anne and bought Anne a sporty new truck. Anne got so excited that when Anne first saw it, Anne couldn't believe Anne's good luck. That is a lot of Anne's. Do we need that many Anne's? Do we need to repeat ourselves that many times? Now, Anne is a really big fan of her name, but even she'd have to agree. These phrases sure could use a her here and there, and perhaps an occasional she. Personal pronouns stand in for a noun, like Mr. McKinley or Grady. He could be Stephen, I might mean Josh, and they could be Bonnie and Brady. So these are the type of pronouns that we've been talking a lot about in class. They're going to replace people, places, and things. They might be a subject pronoun doing the uh, verb, or it might be an object pronoun, the one that's receiving the verb. But they're all going to take the place of person, people, person, places, and things. Sometimes a pronoun is very possessive. This cookie is mine, it's not hers. A possessive pronoun is going to show ownership. Demonstrative pronouns help point something out. As in, this, these, and those are all yours. So this is a pronoun, these are a pronoun, and those is also a pronoun. Because it's not gonna specifically say cake, it's going to say this. It's gonna take the place of a cake. Indefinite pronouns talk, tell about people and things without being specific, as in someone around here is quite a good cook, and something in here smells terrific. So I can't tell you exactly what smells terrific. I don't know if it's the cake. I don't know if it's pizza. I'm just saying that it's something. I don't know exactly what that something is. I don't know what the noun or the antecedent is, but I'm still going to use this pronoun something to take the place of the noun. Nothing and all are indefinite, too. So are anyone, no one, or any. Everyone, none, several, somebody, some, both, neither, nobody, and many. Look at all those indefinite pronouns. 
They're all going to take the place of a noun, even if you don't know what the specific noun is. If it helps form a question, it's called interrogative, a very inquisitive pronoun. Interrogative and inquisitive both um, are questioning words. What are you looking at? Who is your daddy? And which road do we take to the hoedown? So what, who, and which are all helping it to be a questioning sentence. Who can replace words like he, she, and me? It's a pronoun that's constantly doing. So if it's doing the verb, it's going to be a subject verb. It's going to be like I, or he, or she, or me. It's going to come before the verb in a sentence. Who ordered pizza? Who spilled the popcorn? And who started the audience booing? So who is the one ordering? Who is the one spilling? And who is the one starting? The subject of the sentence. It says, whom takes the place of them, him, and her? So whom is going to be just, just like who? but it's going to go at the end of the sentence. It's going to go after the verb. It's going to take the place of them, him, or her. It says the action is being done to it. So it's an object pronoun. With whom am I speaking? I am doing the speaking. Whom is not. So it's receiving the speaking. In whom can I trust? I am doing the trusting, whom is not doing the verb. To whom would you like me to glue it? Whom is not gluing anything? Whom is having something glued to it? It's receiving the verb. So we're going to use whom instead of who. So like a pinch hitter or a good babysitter, the pronoun will say, you can go now. I've got your job covered. Aren't you glad you've discovered the helpful and practical pronoun? So what is a pronoun? Do you know? Um, that is the end of our book. I do have one thing that I would like to review with you. Um, and you know from class that when we're talking about subject and object pronouns, that a subject pronoun is the one that's doing the verb, and the object pronoun is the one that's having the verb done to it. So um, my little practice here says the clue for helping to determine whether you're using a subject pronoun or an object pronoun is you are going to determine what the pronoun would be without anybody else in the sentence. You guys know you don't say, me went to the store. You know you say, I went to the store. But for some reason, when you put another person in the sentence, um, it becomes more difficult to determine which pronoun you're going to use. The simplest thing that I can tell you is to just take that other person out. So my sentence says, Alex and blank played soccer at recess. If I want to figure out my pronoun, if I'm using a subject or object pronoun, I'm just going to take Alex out. Now, would I say me played soccer at recess or I played soccer at recess? Yeah, I'm going to say I played soccer at recess. So I'm going to go ahead and put that pronoun I in. And it doesn't matter if Alex is back in the sentence or not. I'm not going to change that I. If you have a subject pronoun, then it, even if you have two subjects, you still have a subject pronoun. It says, can Jeff play with Alex and me? Or Alex and blank. So I am going to take Alex out. Can Jeff play with I? No. Can Jeff play with me? We're going to determine what that pronoun is going to be with only the pronoun in the sentence. So it doesn't matter if I put Alex back in. Can Jeff play with Alex and me? Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is a type of pronoun that wasn't mentioned in the book, and that's called a reflexive pronoun. A reflexive pronoun is going to be used when your subject and your object are the same. So I am the one doing the verb, and then I'm also going to be the one in the object. So if I said I can do it by myself, I'm going to add self at the end of it. 
Um, you can do it by yourself. Um, they were playing by themselves. When you use reflective, reflexive pronouns, um, you have self at the end. So I do have one little example of that. Um, this says Alex doesn't want to play by. Um, I have to make sure that it agrees in number and gender. So Alex is a boy, so he is going to be a him. And I'm not going to just say Alex doesn't want to play by him. Since Alex is going to be talking about himself, he is going to add self at the end of the pronoun. Alex doesn't want to play by himself. The kids made dirt cake all by, the kids are going to be a they or them. So they made dirt cake by them, and since it is a reflexive pronoun, I'm going to add self. The kids played dirt cake by themselves. It reflects back on. If, when I see that self, that tells me that not only am I talking about the pronoun as the subject, but they're also going to be the object of the verb as well. So I hope you guys feel like you know uh, pronouns a little bit better after our book. Please be sure you're ready to take the AR test and do a little pronoun practice on Friday. Bye.